welcome to Chattanooga, Tennessee. I am gonna show you some of the best outdoor things to do in this awesome town. Now, Chattanooga was actually voted best small town ever by Outside Magazine readers twice and best adventure town by National Geographic Adventure. And there is a ton of stuff to do here from hiking and mountain biking to kayaking and even rock climbing. So I'm gonna show you some of my best picks over the next 36 hours. Chattanooga sits on the Tennessee River just two hours from Atlanta, Georgia. Now downtown is a great place to explore when you arrive into town. You can enjoy a visit to several great museums. There's also an aquarium and you can learn about the rich Civil War history and Native American history that goes back 10,000 years. Now one of the things I enjoyed was a scenic walk along the beautiful Tennessee River and along the pedestrian only Walnut Street Bridge, which is the oldest bridge of its kind on the East Coast. Now the name Chattanooga refers to a Muscogan word meaning rock rising to a point, which is believed to refer to Lookout Mountain. If you're looking for a spot to relax or have a picnic in between all of your adventures, you can come to Ross Landing, which is where I am right now. This is a beautiful area in town, right on the banks of the Tennessee River, and a lot of people are out here just enjoying this beautiful day. I'm gonna do the same for a few. Ross's Landing was actually used as one of the largest Native American internment camps prior to the Trail of Tears. And after their removal, Ross's Landing was incorporated as the city of Chattanooga. The Cherokee once lived throughout Georgia, Alabama, and Tennessee. Cherokee that lived in this region prior to European colonization were actually forcibly removed in 1838 and sent out on the Trail of Tears to live on reservations in Oklahoma. Chattanooga is located at the joining of the Cumberland Plateau and the Appalachian Mountains, which gives it some unbelievable nature experiences right in town. And the first one we're visiting is Rock City Gardens, located at the top of Lookout Mountain. Right now I'm at Rock City Gardens, which is basically a giant rock garden. It's been open since the 1930s, and it's a bunch of pathways that meander through a bunch of big rock formations here on Lookout Mountain. Tickets to Rock City are $22.95 per adult, and you have to reserve a timed entry to get in right now because of the pandemic. There's a lot of really beautiful scenery here that I'm gonna show you right now. Now this is just six miles from downtown Chattanooga, and Rock City is a true marvel of nature. It features massive ancient rock formations, gardens with over 400 native plant species, and breathtaking panoramic views over Chattanooga. Now, Rock City officially opened as a public attraction on May 21st, 1932. And while you're here, you can follow along the Enchanted Trail, where each step reveals natural beauty and wonders along the woodland path through rock formations, caverns, narrow passageways, and wonderful displays of light. From the top of Rock City Garden, there is a place called Lover's Leap. You can actually see seven states from here and a beautiful waterfall. So even with that timed entry, it's actually still pretty busy here at Rock City. So just know that, make sure you do bring a mask and you do have hand sanitizer in your bag too. Now we're going down into Fairyland Cavern, which you might think is for the kids, but this is absolutely beautiful. They have all these colorful lights. There's a sparkly rock down here, and if you're like me, probably gonna love it. My next stop is Point Park. Now this is just up the road from Rock City Gardens. And this is actually the nation's first and largest military park. It sits prominently up on this hillside with fantastic views over the city of Chattanooga. Point Park was the site of the Civil War battle, commonly referred to as the Battle Above the Clouds. 
Now this is part of the national park system. So if you have a national park pass, you can get in for free. Otherwise it is $7 per adult and children under the age of 15 are free. It's open from 8.30 in the morning to about sunset. And I highly recommend you come here at the end of the day. The view over the town of Chattanooga and the Tennessee River is just spectacular. You can get some great photos here if you're looking for a family photo or just a great picture of you with the sunset. I really enjoyed coming here at this time of day. As you guys can see, the colors were just phenomenal. Right now we're at Foster Falls, just 30 minutes outside Chattanooga. And this is a great place to come and see a beautiful waterfall. If you've got small children or are with your family, it's super accessible. This is also a great spot for people to come if you are a rock climber or looking to do some hiking. There's a lot of trails around here as well. And as you can see behind me, this waterfall is stunning. After visiting the top of the falls, you can actually take a trail down to the bottom of the trail, which is what we're doing right now. And it is fall, as you guys can probably tell. One of the things I'm seeing on this trail is leaves, but just look at the size of these. They're absolutely massive. Foster Falls is part of the Tennessee State Park System. Parking here is free, and dogs are also able to use the trails here. Now situated near the falls, there are a campground, it's got 26 sites, bathhouse with heated showers and flushable toilets, picnic tables and campfire rings at every site as well. Now the state park system here in Tennessee is awesome. You can actually check out my website or the Tennessee State Park website for more information on booking a campsite as well. If you're looking to rock climb, the crag here offers 179 routes at a wide variety of grades and heights. It's great for all levels of climbers, and I didn't see anyone climbing when I was here, but it's definitely one of the most popular spots outside Chattanooga for rock climbing. Fall Creek Falls is located about 90 minutes north of Chattanooga. It is in the central time zone also, so make a note of that when you are coming up here. Chattanooga is actually on the eastern time. But this state park is amazing. It's pretty big. It's got over 50 miles of hiking and biking trails. It's also got a lake. There are campgrounds here for RVs and tent cabbing. There's also cabins for rent, and there's lots of facilities. Not only is there plentiful bathrooms, but there's also a camp store. Right away on this trail, you are brought to this overlook where you can see Fall Creek Falls. Now, Fall Creek Falls is actually the tallest waterfall east of the Rockies at 264 feet. And at the bottom here, it goes into this gorge, which actually at the bottom is the last virgin forest in most of the East Coast. So this is just a remarkable area. This waterfall is absolutely breathtaking. I'm gonna be heading down to the base of the waterfall to give you guys a better view. I've got even more ideas for you in my complete outdoor adventure guide to Chattanooga, which you can check out on my website, Alice's Adventures on Earth. And I wanna hear from you too, so make sure you leave me a comment down below with your favorite type of outdoor adventure. There are two things that North Georgia and Tennessee have a lot of. One of them is waterfalls, the other one is caverns. Right now we're in Sweetwater, Tennessee, to actually visit the largest underground lake in America. Now this is the second largest underground lake in the entire world. The first one is in Namibia, but we are here to go down under the ground in this cavern with a company called Lost Sea Adventures. They're gonna be taking us down on foot and then we're gonna be actually hopping in a boat to explore this more than four and a half acre lake a little bit more. 
The Lost Sea is a national registered natural landmark. Now it's part of a vast cave system called Craghead Caverns, which extends underneath a mountain here in Sweetwater, Tennessee. The cave actually contains fossils from the Pleistocene epoch and a large volume of crystal clusters. So this cavern was used for a couple different things over the years. The Cherokee actually used to have meetings in here and then during the Civil War it was used to mine saltpeter. The lake has a visible surface area of approximately four and a half acres. I headed out in a little flat bottom boat to explore what we could see, but there's actually more than 12 acres more of the lake that goes below this cave system as well. This lake also has been stocked with rainbow trout, which you can see swimming around here. They've installed lights and feed the fish fish food because there is no natural food here in the cavern. One of the super interesting things about this cavern is that the lake wasn't actually discovered until the 1960s, even though it was a known cavern for more than 100 years beforehand. All right, guys, what did you think about that lake? That was pretty awesome. And this whole trip has been just amazing, exploring Chattanooga and all of the outdoor activities. There is so much more to do here. There's more hiking, more biking, fishing, hunting, you name it, there's an adventure for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know what to do now. If you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with a friend or on social media so that we can grow this channel also. And thank you guys so much for watching. Before you go, check out one of these other videos on my channel and I will see you guys out on another adventure very soon.